Marilijn van Geloof. Yeah. How how was that pronunciation? Yeah, that's, that's was that pretty okay? pretty good. Pretty good. Or Joss Loudon, who is uh, an outstanding um, British rider, an, an older woman who's come to the sport slightly later in life. Um, used to be a runner, couldn't make her mind up between being a runner and a, a cyclist, and uh, has finally plumped for um, cycling. And she's doing really, really, really well. As you can see here with Lizzie Bennett, that it is, of course, slightly uphill here as well. So you never really get that rhythm. This is one of the riders from the World Cycling Center, of course, um, always very interesting to have a rider from Morocco, Vatima El Hayani. And uh, of course, the World Cycling Center has been um, important for many riders getting to uh, the highest level. One of the most prominent riders, of course, being Tanil Campbell. Who's Three, now sorry, 351. Campbell is possibly the best um, example. example of a product. You can see the drops rider here, Lizzie Bennett, is actually on a road bike here. Yeah, well, that will be a, a huge disadvantage, of course, compared to the others. The riders Very from the World so. Cycling Centre uh, were on road bikes as well. Um, this is... Um, Claudia Jongerais. <laughs> Claudia Jongerais. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, you couldn't have known that. I could have done. I could have learned a bit more. Okay. A very um, high gear here for Lizzie Bennett. Yeah, she's pushing an absolute monster gear there. She also looks slightly uncomfortable on the bike, slightly lopsided there. It looks very uncomfortable to watch. Um, if we look at the start field here, um, two years ago, because last year the race was cancelled due to COVID, the race was won by Lisa Brennauer. Uh, very exciting race we saw. Second place for Damien Vollering, third place for Lizzie Banks. Neither of these riders are here, unfortunately. Um, other winners in recent years, uh, Letizia Paternoster um, in the uh, prologue, but I'm looking at the GC. That is the one that I wanted to show you. Um, um, Pater Noster, Majerus, of course, winning her home race, which was uh, quite a battle. This is a good time for somebody on a normal bike, 3.33. So well done for Lizzie Bennett. Um, I remember 2017 that it was a very exciting battle uh, for the bonus seconds, and yep. we will see that. <laughs> This race is all about bonus seconds, really. You have to get close to the top spot in the prologue and then manage your bonus seconds, whether that be on intermediate sprints, which there are, um, I don't think there are any um, intermediate time bonuses during the race in the two road stages, but you have to try and get in the top three of each of the road, road stages in order to take advantage of the 10, 6 and 4 that are on the line in the road stages, stages but not today. Sophie van Rooyen, a young rider for the Park Hotel Valkenburg, also an accomplished cyclocross rider. She's uh, very versatile and she's also low in that 330s uh, region. We have some technical issues here um, on site. Like I said already on Twitter, we had a power outage basically a minute before we were due live. And, uh, that has caused some problems also with the motorbikes on the course. So hopefully we will bring you some more images of the riders on the course. But for now, we have the finish cam and we're waiting for the riders to come in. 2019, we basically had the same um, stages as we have this year. They, they choose the same uh, finish places, uh, Garni and Steinfurt. Um, Demi Vollering, like you said, Owen, won that prologue two years ago. The stage in Steinfurt, remember that, in the pouring rain, was won by Marta Lach, the Polish rider, and the last stage by Lisa Brennauer, and that's how she cemented the uh, overall win. These are not the women from Jumbo Visma, although they um, look a bit similar, but this is the French team of Charente, uh, Stade Rogelet, Charente Maritime, uh, Maritime, Charente Maritime being a um, department in France. Uh, a lot of these races, a lot of these teams 
uh, amateur teams are linked to the regions in, in France, and this is one of them. Um, France has some women's teams, um, and of course with the Tour de France looming on the horizon next year, a proper Tour de France, that is, um, other teams are showing interest to becoming a uh, professional team, including, for example, Cofidis and their um, management director or uh, manager of HR, he said, well, we want our sponsorship to reflect our company. This is, of course, a very interesting rider. And if you followed this race in the past, you know the heartbreaking moment when Rihanna Marcus was caught only a few hundred meters before the finish line. She also did very well last year. In, in, in general, I think she was third on the GC overall, was she last year? Um, so she could go really well. She also has another year of development in her. So she will be stronger, more canny, and she will be the, the team leader here, I would imagine. She's got a really good chance of doing well. It's a, uh, a mixed team here, led by uh, Lieselot Lisa Lisa Delcra, Nancy van der Burg, Carlijn Swinkels, uh, Rianne Marke, Julie van der Velde, Anouska Koster, and Romy Kasper, whom we have already seen. Start ramp here in Luxembourg is going to be 17 minutes past seven local time, and that is uh, Maria Giulia Convalonieri. Uh, we have some interesting riders in the last, well, batch of riders, of course, with Majurus, who's won this race before. Backstead, Eleanor Backstead, finally back after yeah. that long, long injury. This could be a good race for her as well to show um, her talent. Um, of course, she was racing in a supportive role in the few races that she's done so far. But uh, well, this could be interesting for her to show um, the huge talent, of course, Num that she has. Yeah, but she's certainly been given the, the, the number one bib in her team. She's number 21 for Trek Segafredo. So it would be good to see her taking a lead here. Um, though she does have some considerable firepower along... along <laughs> her in the team with uh, 2016 world champion, world road champion that is, uh, Amelia Diedrichsen, uh, L Loretta Hansen who we've already seen and we've already seen Taylor Wiles. Uh, Ruth Winder is also here and I think uh, Ruth Winder is possibly responsible for one of the most memorable moments of the season yeah, so far at uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, where um, <laughs> Demi following thought she'd won it and it seems that Ruth Winder won it by, by the, the casing of her tubular tyre, I imagine. Young uh, Neve Bradbury here for the Canyon Shram team. The rider who came through the Swift Academy, just like uh, Jay Vine did for the men, and he came second in the Tour of Turkey. So it's a good stepping stone. Neve Bradbury, of course, um, very compact rider, very uh, small rider, yeah. you can also say. Um, and finally, we have some great images back here of the prologue, and it's a very technical ride. She's, of course, steering on a time trial bike. It takes a little bit of uh, effort. And this is interesting what the time is going to be. Oh, that can't be right. I can't think that she's really done 420. We'll get some... Um, I hope at least it's 320. Yeah. That they uh, have the timing wrong. And the timing's come through to us here. 319.2 for Ray Rayanna Marcus. So she's, she's within striking distance, but... Yeah, she's fifth at the moment. But... It's okay. Four, four seconds if they come to bunch sprint. It's, it's going to be difficult for her to overhaul that. Kenyan Shrem are here with uh, Elise Shabit, the uh, Swiss national champion. Uh, Ella Harris, Neve Bradbury, um, Ludwig, uh, Omer Shapira and... Um, I'm missing one. Shebe, Ella Harris, Michaela Harvey, Harvey. Hannah Ludwig, Omar Shapiro, so, and Lee Bradford. <laughs> Next rider across the line of the lift cycling team is uh, Jaskulska, the Polish rider, and we're back with uh, Bradbury. Canyon Sram are quite interesting here. They are the only team on the start list 
um, who don't have a rider who has ridden this race before. Every other uh, team have some experience of Festival Elsie Jacobs on their uh, lineup, but but not Canyon Sram, which is quite quite interesting, especially as they've come so close to winning GC in the past. You already mentioned the strength of um, Team DSM, of course, but also Trek Segafredo have a uh, pretty strong team here. Um, of course, with eight of the of seven of the of eight of the nine World Two teams, uh, the organisers are pretty happy. Neve Bradbury, she's also going to finish around three thirty. A lot of riders finish around that 3.30 yeah. margin. Which shows just how good the current leading time of uh, Leah Kirschman is at 3.15. 15 seconds over 2.2 kilometres is a huge margin. And of course, Kirschman can sprint. She can sprint. She can, she's at home, shoulders on against the opposition in a bunch sprint. She could quite easily win the GC here if she can score some bonus seconds over the next couple of days. The top five at the moment is, as you might expect, quite a Dutch affair. But the leader is still the Canadian national champion, Lea Kirchman, with 3.15. Karlen Swinkels in second place, only a few hundreds of a second behind Lea Kirchman. In third place, Talita de Jong, one of the earliest starters, second off the ramp she was. Anuska Koster in fourth place and Ruth Winder in fifth place at the moment. So there hasn't uh, been any changes in that top ten. Uh, it, or top five, and that won't change with uh, Alessia Patuelli. Her time, 3.41. Here we have the rider from Team Movistar with uh, number 31, the French woman, Aude Bienic. And this is one of the longest stretches on the road where you can actually be in that time trial position, be aero. Um, and contrary to most of the road services here in Luxembourg, because I brought my bike and I will be out riding tomorrow morning, uh, the road services in uh, Luxembourg are fantastic. Excellent, yeah. But, uh, well, not this, this stretch of bike path, unfortunately. Bianic is um, another, uh, she's a former French uh, time trial champion, I believe, certainly road champion, and she is the kind of powerful rider who could also go very well here. In fact, Movistar have brought a pretty strong lineup as well. They have a strong squad, but uh, with Bianic. Guariski, who we've already seen, Emma Norsgaard, Emma Jorgensen, depending on how you, uh, which surname you're using, uh, is a very interesting rider. Um, Diederiksen, of course, has the explosiveness to do a time yeah. trial. She looks very aero, of course, is the national champion of her country. Fantastic young generation they have in Denmark with Diederiksen, with Norsgaard, and also with uh, Cecilia Utrup Ludwig. Yeah. Very interesting young generation, and they are all, all three of them are, well, world best at the moment. That was a little bit of a wobbly yeah. turn by Dieter Dixon. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was quite a wobbly little turn there. Not saying I'd do any better, of course, but um, yeah, she did take that quite slow, and then she's got to get on top of that massive gear again to get herself back up to speed, back into that aero position. Next rider across the finish line, uh, Mail Grostet, which um, translates as Big Head Grostet. A rider who's been um, doing a lot of the spring classics and um, has a fantastic Twitter feed if you speak French. And another one in the 330 region, 330.94 for Grostet. We stay with uh, Diederiksen, who of course has a very important uh, focus this year, and that is the Olympic Games. She's going to ride the medicine there with... Um, Julie Lett. With Julie Lett. Of course, they have been European champion together. And Amelie Diederiksen will, of course, also be riding the uh, Omnium, that four-event, uh, fantastic four-event race on the Olympic track in Tokyo, taking it up against, uh, amongst others, uh, world champion Kirsten Bildt. And Julie Lett, her, her um, Madison teammate, is here representing Sarah Tizit to WNT Pro Cycling as well. And that is also the main sponsor of this race, officially called the Sarah Tizit Festival S. Jacobs. Uh, Sarah Tizit have a large plant here in Luxembourg, so the race is important for the team who are here with Asensio, Convalonieri, Hamas, Lett, 
Teutenberg and Fitzjeli. So no Brennauer, no Kirsten Wild, unfortunately. Um, but a team that should um, go on the attack. They will race this race aggressively, no doubt, with the sponsor being uh, also the main sponsor of this race. And smaller organizations like this really depend on sponsors yeah. like Seratisit and also, of course, the sponsors of the different jerseys. You talk of Brennauer and Wild, though, I don't think we'll see them before the Olympics because they'll both be on the track as well, won't they? Um, Brennauer with Lisa Klein, another former uh, a podium, former podium finisher in this race. Here we go, 3.29 for Diederik. That is uh, 10 seconds slower than uh, the rider in, number f uh, in place number five, Ruth Winder. So uh, not a really great time by Diederik. But her focus uh, this season will be different, of yeah. course, because of the Olympic Games. Kelly van der Steen of the Bingle Casino Schildelmeere team. Uh, Bingle being a casino and Schildelmeere being swimming pool. Yes. Did you know that? They Schildelmeere is swimming pool. Swimming pool. Right. Oh, I didn't know. Four, that, no. Three. I'll tell you who's two, coming up soon. One. Will be Lonica Unica. Oh, now there's an interesting rider. The winner of the Healthy Aging Tour. There Finals. she is. Here she comes. She's a super strong young woman. She really, really is. Let's have a look. Now, there no. is Kelly van der Steen just off the ramp and then straight into that hill. The time of Lonneke Uniken is uh, 3.17.67. That takes her into the top 10, the rider for SD Works. Fantastic final stage we saw on the Van Berg in uh, the Healthy Aging Tour. It was very cold, it was rainy, and she kind of just accidentally rode away from the bunch and um, it seemed like the peloton was not really aware that she was taking such a big gap and then thanks to uh, mostly Loretta Hansen, Ellen van Dijk managed to get back enough to Monica Unica to secure her in that race. Ellen van Dijk coming back soon hopefully after her COVID-19 infection. Yes let's hope so, um, she's a, a hugely powerful for rider for the, for the Trek Segafredo team uh, and, and one of the most one of the strongest and most experienced riders in the entire peloton and um, and also a, a lovely person to speak to Vicelli just crossing the line there 334 and this is Emily Moberg one Nor of the Norwegian rider Absolutely one of the more experienced riders on the Drops Le Call team who have been doing great and are fantastic ambassadors for the sport. I just saw a great article by uh, Saif O'Shea about um, um, a lot of things going on outside of cycling. Uh, careers, dual careers are important to uh, the Drops Le Call team, uh, to Bob Farney. But also the team very open about everything, uh, about something that every woman in this peloton copes with, and that is the menstrual cycle. And you don't see very often that in interviews, teams are open about that, riders are open about that. But to me, as a woman, those things are very interesting to read because, of course, uh, we all deal with that. And it does affect your athletic ability. So good for Sai Vosche to write that on Velo News and, and go check it out. Of course, it's not something I can really comment on. Uh, no, not you having shouldn't. experienced you it. You shouldn't. Um, this is uh, the Canadian rider, Magdalena Valliere. She um, rides for the World Cycling Centre and um, used to be based in Sittard in the south of the Netherlands. Back with the rider for Drops the Call. It's an interesting conversation as to whether you're high cadence or low cadence. Crikey, she threw the bike into that last corner there. But the high cadence or low cadence thing um, in time trialling is an interesting um, argument. I think you probably get faster if you are a lower cadence with higher power. But um, she certainly, she's a, she's a sprinter, isn't she? Essentially, em Emilia uh, Moberg. And um, so she's going to ride in her own style. Coming across the line is uh, Kelly van der Steen of the Bingle Casino Cheval Mare team, another rider in the low 330s. And she looked like she'd left it all out on the road there. She absolutely looked like she'd emptied herself. Well, these 
these races, ca these race days can be incredibly boring because it's waiting, 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 warming up, waiting, going to the start, waiting, having your bike check, waiting some more, and then have a three, three and a half minute effort. And that's it. That's what you plan to do the entire day. So most of the riders who are not specialists in the prologue just pref uh, prefer a road stage. But most I of the riders went for a little spin this morning because most of the teams arrived here yesterday already, uh, despite being the prologue uh, starting at 5.30 at night. I don't know whether riders find this kind of thing enjoyable because it's just absolute pain for the entire uh, entire race for a prologue. There is no, and the time trial in general, there is no rest, there is no recovery. It's just 100% effort for the, the entire, entire 2.2 kilometers. 3.32 for Emily Mobo. Spela Ken, a rider from uh, Slovenia on the Masi Tactic women's team, a team from um, uh, Spain. And this is the jersey that I was talking about. This could be SD Works. There. I think that's a gorgeous colour jersey. I yeah, really do. But it's exactly the same. <laughs> if if um, any of you Brits out there remember the rhubarb and custard sweets as a child, I mean, well, that's what it reminds me of. I, the I'm body, just, anyway. I just, I'm just wondering where this is going. I thought you were just starting your Beryl Burton rhubarb story. Oh, you can't give it away. It's going to be tomorrow. The, yes. The Beryl yeah. Burton rhubarb story is going to be tomorrow. Yeah. Julia von Buchhofer, she excelled in the Ardennes races. In the Amstel Gold race, she was one of the few riders to finish and one of the youngest riders to finish the race, actually. Great uh, ride by her, also there in the low 330s. This team is the Andy Schleck uh, Immo Losch team. Andy Schleck has a really big bike shop here in Luxembourg, beautiful bike shop, and he sponsors a women's team and is very passionate about it. His brother, since this week, is part of the Luxembourg Cycling Federation. Oh. Yep. And they are, um, well, still very active in cycling. Andy Schleck is um, race director in the Skoda Tour, the Luxembourg, the uh, men's race in September. And on GCN Plus, you can see a fantastic interview with uh, Andy Schleck uh, and Daniel Lloyd. So We just saw Chiara Consoni roll down the ramp. And one of my favorite riders, one of my favorite interviews ever, was speaking to her after she won the final stage of the 2019 Bulls Ladies Tour. She was just so happy. Well, she couldn't oh. fail to make <laughs> everyone around her happy as well. I it know. was just a wonderful experience to interview someone who was so happy. I'm going to give you the top 10 at the moment. Uh, still leading Lea Kirchmann in second place, Karin Swinkels. In third, Talita de Jong. Lonneke Uneken now in fourth place. She has entered that top five. Anuska Koster is in fifth. Ruth Winder in sixth. Rianne Marcus in seventh. Emma Norsgaard in eighth. Clara Coponi, we haven't seen her, the French rider, but she's ninth at the moment. And Barbara Guarishi is currently in tenth place. Everything still very close together. Uh, Guarishi in tenth place with a time of 3.20. So that's only five seconds behind the number one at the moment, Lea Kirchmann. But Lea Kirchmann was one of the first riders yep. to start. So she has been in the hot seat for a while now, um, almost uh, over an hour, actually. Her, ride, her start time was 5.42. Arrival here of the young Norwegian rider, Ostad. And then we quickly move on to uh, Chiara Consoni, who I think will win a stage here. It's quite a bold prediction, but uh, yeah, she won the uh, Valencia one. Um, yep. Of course, the field there was of a lower quality than we have here. But she is that kind of rider that you don't notice, and all of a sudden she's there. She also won the Ronda de Muscron as well. So she's two, two wins to her uh, credit so far this year. So she's absolutely one of the riders to uh, look out for. Tomorrow we have... Um, as Owen told me, the longest stage ever here in Festival LC Jakobs. Uh, 125 kilometers from Steinfurt to Steinfurt with four categorized climbs. And on Sunday, a very exciting stage in, uh, in Garnich with a, uh, well, 
pesky climb in the local yeah. lap. Yeah. Fantastic uh, courses. Both courses really are um, open to very aggressive racing, and uh, I think we're going to see that both days. You talk of um, Consoni here uh, winning a stage. It, 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 it's certainly not beyond the bounds of possibility. That the team is so well drilled. They have such a fantastic lead out. Um, and Consoni is the kind of woman that can finish it off, uh, as is, of course, Elisa Balsamo. Um, I think if uh, you cast your minds back to the Ceratizit Challenge in Madrid last September, sorry, October, uh, November. What, what, what was last Nove year? I can't November. remember. It was November, November, was it? Um, and, and the way they just dominated um, what was Team Sunweb then uh, on the final lap was absolutely incredible. And that's how they um, Balsamo won the stage, because they just have such a fantastic lead out. The time for Chiara Consoni, 3.27, and you could already see it in the way she crossed the finish line, that she didn't go all no. in. She didn't go back to that time trial position. This is Jursina, a rider from the uh, Ale BTC Ljubljana team, a rider from Russia on the time trial bike, the Cipollini bikes. And legend has it that uh, Mr. Cipollini himself uh, sometimes is training with these girls and still wants to win every sprint against Marta Bastianelli. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, I wonder. This is Ella Harris, the rider from New Zealand, on her way for her 2.2 kilometer prologue. I wonder if his ego would allow him to lose to a to a current <laughs> professional. No, he will not. Not until he is 60, 69 at least, or 72 possibly. Julie van der Velde just crossed the line in 3.25. That's a good time. Yep, an interesting rider as well. If we look at the start list now, we still have Lorena Vibes. She is about to start in a minute from now. Uh, also interesting to watch out for Nee Fischer Black, of course. Um, Julie Lett, uh, Misha Bredewold, a young Dutch talent who especially likes these kind of races to show herself. Uh, and I think we will see her uh, later this weekend. Seferin Ero is a former world champion. Also, we are looking out for Corin Rivera, for Eleanor Buxted, Majurus, and the last rider off the ramp is going to be Convalonieri. And this is Lorena Vibes, still bearing the scars on her knee from that horrible crash in the Healthy Aging Tour. Uh, this is not Marie Lenet, but this is... Uh, the, the rider from DSM. She was largely saved by her shorts, wasn't she? The, yeah, the DSM the, Dyneema shorts. Yeah, they have these high-tech shorts that prevent a lot of um, road rash. And she got away with that because it was a terrible, terrible crash. You may recall it was on the um, motor, motor racing circuit right up in the northeast of the Netherlands, uh, Assen. And um, she went down hard, oh. didn't she? <laughs> really, really hard. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. But she's a super strong rider, and, and we could quite happily see um, see her win the GC here. She, if you might have seen the guy just checking his watch there. I think it was Jorge Sanz, wasn't it? It was Jorge Sanz, yeah, yeah from Movistar, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure, but yeah. I thought I recognised him. Um, yeah. Of course, he's here with a um, team as well, without um, Annemiek van Vleuten, but with Bojanik Guarici, Norskart, Alba, Teruel, Lourdes, Oyarbide, and Leah Thomas. So that is a strong team as well. Yeah, I think we'll see... Um, Van Vleuten in the Spanish stage yep. races that are coming up. Absolutely. And then it will be all in for the Olympics. We'll see her at the Giro and, uh, and the Olympics. Well, she's won two big races this spring. Um, she certainly has. Netting the first uh, classic, the first monument for Movistar in 42 years. Um, so that was pretty impressive by her. Um, uh, the first Tour of Flanders in 42 years. Um, I was having an interesting conversation with someone on, on Twitter uh, and they were saying how it was always the same women that won. And then I asked them to check the results yeah. for, for the eight, as it was then, World Tour races. And it's, we had seven different winners. It's been a fantastic it, spring. It has been a fantastic spring. And, um, uh, and whilst it may be the same group of women that are contesting the finish, it's not the same women that are taking the win, and that's absolutely fantastic for the sport. The times of Mayanna Voss winning eight of the ten World Tour races are over, yeah. although she won two. So, 
that's still a pretty good score mm. in the current times. Um, it, it was interesting to see how SD Works beat her up, didn't they, on, on the final climb <laughs> at uh, Liège last week. Well, she hung on she on did. La Rochefoucauld, but there was this little, little, little climb after that that did her in, and it was basically Anna van der Breche killing my honor <laughs> So, um, yeah, that happens when you're on... Uh, it, you was on it was on that <laughs> secondary climb it was, it was that, under- Amanda, that Amanda Spratt attacked in, I think, 18, and... Um, Look at this. Under Brecken, went if this is correct, Rouses. we might have a new best time. Let's wait uh, for the confirmation. But uh, Lorena Bibas was looking super fast. We are waiting for the confirmation of Lorena Bibas time. There it is. It is a new best time. 3.12.3. New best time for Lorena Bibas, which is hugely important if uh, she wants to win this race. Of course, she has a mighty sprint and there's 10 bonus seconds every time you cross the finish line in first place. So this is absolutely huge for Lorena Vibas. 3.12, beating the best time of her teammate at the moment, Leah Kirchmann. Three seconds faster than the Canadian champion. What a fantastic ride by Lorena Vibas. Yeah. Moving on to uh, another big Dutch talent, uh, the former junior cyclocross world champion, Shirin van Androoy. Let's do a little slow-mo there of that finish of Lorena Vibus. And that was spectacular. DSM keeping it in the family as well, of course, because um, Kirschman had, uh, had the lead for so long, but now her teammate, teammate has the lead. Shirin so van Androoy, who had a uh, pretty rough year, of course, a crash in one of the uh, cyclocross races. I think it was all the way back in November, which, uh, well, caused uh, quite a serious injury, hampering also her uh, preparation for the road season. But uh, this is a good race for her as well. The two youngsters on the Trek Segafredo team, uh, both here with uh, both Eleanor Baxted and um, Shirin van Androoy. So it will be interesting to see what they can do and grab the opportunities that they are given. Only 19. Another interesting rider just crossed the finish line with a pretty good time just outside of the top 10. Marie Lenay of the uh, FDG Nouvelle Aquitaine Futuroscope team, also a team uh, named after a region, Nouvelle Aquitaine, uh, just like the Stade Rochelet Charente Maritime uh, team. Maritime team. Thank you. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Next across the line for Team Movistar. That was Loris Oabide the former national champion on the road. And we're back with uh, Shirin van Androoy. She should be uh, absolutely fantastic in taking those corners, of course, with her cyclocross uh, prowess. She just um, registered for a um, university education. She's going to do psychology next really? year at the University of Maastricht. So she is uh, not only fast on the bike, but also very intelligent. Next rider of the ramp of the um, World Cycling Centre. World Cycling Centre. Anastasia Kolisava, a rider from uh, Belarus. Of course, we have one uh, big name from Belarus, and that is Elena Amirusik. And this is uh, a younger compatriot of the Canyon Shram rider. Back here with Shirin van Androoy attacking that finish line. This will be a good time. Oh, perhaps not. <laughs> <laughs> The time of Shirin van Androoy, 3.22, 17th place for her. This is one of the oldest riders in the peloton, Natalie van Gogh. The oldest rider in the race. But I'll, still, I'll uh, still super, super strong, well into her 40s, an inspiration, uh, Natalie van Gogh. Um, also has a full-time job, or almost a full-time job, working in IT. And she was always there at the front of the race, one of the most important, or if not the most important rider, next to uh, Talita de Jong on this team that um, was formed really haphazardly at the end of the season, uh, the Bingo uh, Casino Cheval Mera team. So they have uh, an interesting collection of riders from, uh, from all over the place including uh, Puk Mona, the infamous Instagram influencer <laughs> who, um, well, hasn't been doing a lot of riding just yet, but hopefully for her, she will find the passion back on the bike and, um, well, focuses on races where the pressure isn't that high. 
Straight from the starting ramp, we face this ramp. So you do you do have to do a proper warm up. That's for sure. You certainly do. Yeah, that's that's a big effort up that climb. I mean, and television always flattens any incline, if you like. But you can see just from those pictures you've just seen just how steep that is. And it is it a brute to start off a race with straight into that. Let's remind her that the best time at the moment is uh, Lorena Vibus, 3.12. Uh, three seconds behind her is Lea Kirchmann, also three seconds behind her. Karlen Swinkels, four seconds behind Lore Lorena Vibus in fourth place is Talita de Jong, and currently in fifth place, also four seconds behind uh, Lorena Vibus is uh, Lonneke Uneken. Julie Letts. Just looks like some gear problems there for uh, Julie as she was coming along the straight there. Just looks like she was spinning and then grinding her legs. And um, I wonder if she had some issues there. And they also had an Italian flag next to her name. Um, and she's Danish. Yeah, my start list is 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 all over the place. I have an Alba Bianic, uh, for example, and an Esme Kirchmann on the start list. Hanna Shabe. So my start list is a bit... In the background, you can just <laughs> see... Christine Majerus, the, the, the local heroine, the local hero, just warming up there on the rollers, looking down, getting her focus ready. And Misha Bredewald of the starting ramp. I had the privilege to uh, do an interview with both her and her boyfriend, Edo Maas. Misha Bredewald in her last year as a junior was um, severely injured by a truck and had a, well, almost year-long revalidation, uh, re Rehab. Uh, <laughs> I'm just confused with the Dutch word, which is <laughs> revalidatie, rehab. Um, but she's back on the level, on the promising mm. level that she had as a junior. And, uh, well, faith has it that her boyfriend um, was hit by a car in the Il Lombardia for the under-23 riders, Edo Maas, and is paralyzed from the waist down and was in the exact same rehabilitation center as she was a year prior. They make a very interesting couple, very accomplished artist as well, Edo Mas. Check out his, uh, his Instagram. Um, he's at the um, Academy of Arts at the moment in uh, Rotterdam. Going into the finish straight there, there is that finish arch with uh, Nathalie van Gogh. 46 years old just started a rock and roll on the on the bike there just finding it difficult to keep the <laughs> Look keep, to keep it going i think this is this is lactate acid yeah that's right yeah. everywhere legs hurting head hurting <laughs> everything lungs hurting toenails hurting everything hurting when you get to that level <laughs> toenails hurting that's the first time ever i heard that one um eros yes severin ero of the uh, stade rogelet team it's um it's a smaller French team, but they're well usually invited here. Um, they were in the past years. Ex-French time trial champion. Exactly. She is. Uh, she's good, but um, just like many young riders, it's always hard to make that step up to be yeah. noticed by the bigger teams. But um, with new teams coming up in France, left and right, um, she probably have a ride next year. I'm sure she will have a ride. Uh, it's a chicken and egg thing. If if you can't afford to train full time, how do you reach the level of the women who can afford to train full time? It's it well, it was one of the interesting things that Kristen Faulkner taught me. Um, one of the revelations, of course, of the spring season, mm -hmm. um, coming from venture capital, and she then uh, now is a, pro, a full time pro cyclist. She said it's not only about training and resting but also getting to know the sport. Of course, yeah. Learning the sport, the history, your rivals, watching back races, doing analysis, that is also part of being a pro cyclist. But most importantly, um, being paid for what you do enables you to rest when you have to and not work a full-time or four days or three days a week job next to it. And resting is half of your job, actually. Yeah, I don't know how people just find the hours to work full time and to train sufficiently to compete in top level races. Time by Anna Christian, 3.35.
for the uh, drops and call team. 68th place at the moment. We have many, many riders between the uh, 330 and 340 um, mark. Um, 332 also for Misha Bredewold. Just crossed the finish line. Of course, we're all anxiously waiting. Final few hundred meters there for Severine Hero. She's at the massive disadvantage with a road bike as well. But still a pretty solid That's time, a decent time. <laughs> on a road bike. It'd be interesting if they had, like they do in, in the UK, they have time trials for, uh, for non-aero. Yeah. Just have the, the yeah. two. 3.30 getting her a 38th place at the moment for the rider from France. Mei Lang is a rider from Estonia, riding for the Anishlek team, also on a road bike. Bye. Next rider of the ramp is Nancy van der Burg for the Jumbo Visma team. Who of course had a fantastic spring with Marianne Vos being uh, back to her all days, I should say. That sprint in Gent Wevelgem was one of the highlights mm. of the spring season. She's been, I, I think, probably a couple of years. We, we will never see Mariana Vos as dominant as she was, mainly because the level of the peloton is, is that much higher, and there are more women that can compete for that for that very reason, for the fact that you know there are more women who are training full time. So we will never see the dominance of her winning the Jira, uh, Jira Rosa and, and, and races races like that. But it is great to see someone so accomplished back at the top of the sport. And she, as I, as I say, she's not going to be as dominant as she was, but she I is think, still at the top of the sport. I think there that's actually lots. a good thing. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. My point is that it's a good thing that not one rider wins every imaginable race. No one um, wants to watch a sport where they know the result. And we're going to see that more and more in women's racing, that riders are going to specialize in certain races. I had this discussion with um, Ashley Molman Passio for the run-up uh, documentary. And she said, I, I, there was the first time in years that I didn't do the Flanders classics, the Flemish classics. But um, the team manager, uh, Denny Stump, said, you should focus on, on the Ardennes. And um, well, unfortunately for her, she crashed yes. twice in, in Flesh, which is her favorite race. But uh, it shows that teams are also specialising and bringing in new riders and not having the same riders do everything from Omlob to, to Liège. And we see some incredibly promising um, climbing talent coming through, the likes of uh, Neve Fisher-Black or Michaela Harvey, the two New Zealanders, who are absolutely fabulous climbers. Um, and the, the young British rider, Scottish rider, I'm sure she'd prefer me to say she was Scottish than just <laughs> British, uh, Anna Shackley. I had the same discussion with uh, Amelia Sharp and she always wants us to, uh, to put a flag of the Isle of Man before yes. her name. Yeah. <laughs> Very proud Isle of Man uh, rider. Sylvia Persico, good time for her, 3.24. That's Nancy Vandenberg coming I think it's a right here, and then she's just got one turn to do, hasn't she? We are with the last riders almost uh, starting is um, Tatiana Guderzo for the Ali BTC Ljubljana team. Then we have uh, Corin Rivera, a former Tour of Flanders winner. Eugenie Duval, Alba Teruel, Eleanor Bakstedt, Bekstedt, uh, Christine Majerus and Maria Giulia. Convalonieri is the last rider to start for the Seratisit WNT Pro Cycling Team. And they have, of course, the numbers ran ranking from one to six because they won this race two years ago with Lisa Brenauer. Van der Berg looks strong. I wonder what's that under her 
a time trial suit. Yeah. Whether on, that's one of those super sapiens things. On her arm. Yeah. 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 I will ask a this a lot tomorrow. A heat monitor or something yeah, like that. Yeah. These super sapiens is, is, is a new brand and they have these round discs on the arm and they monitor all sorts of things. And I think that's one of the things that she's wearing there. Tatiana Guderzo, she's been around, well, basically Quite a long forever. Time. Yeah. Um, 2009 Road World Champion. I think it was 2019. 2009, rather. It wasn't, certainly wasn't 19. Probably Mayanna Foss in second place. Yes, <laughs> yes. Most, yeah. li- most likely. <laughs> yeah, that was the. the, the they were she the, had some issues with days. Italian riders yeah. back yeah. in the days at the World Championship. Giorgio Bronzini. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Guderzo still enjoying her craft. Nancy van der Burg just crossed the finish line in 3.25. Yes, Mariana Vos was second. Tatiana Gudert, so it was in I think um, Karel Evans, Karel Evans won the men's race that year. I know it rained. And Yes, it did, yeah. <laughs> Gudert, so won uh, with uh, Vos leading home uh, 19 seconds behind, behind Naomi Cantelli and Kristen Armstrong. Yeah, if you look at the top 10 of that year, we have two riders still active, and that is Guderzo and Mariana Vos, so they've been around forever. Corin Rivera, her team is doing absolutely splendidly at the moment with uh, one and two, Lorena Vibas leading. On a uh, road bike. On a road bike, indeed. So that will mean that she either doesn't have a time trial bike yet, or it's had a mechanical of some sort. She doesn't seem to be entirely happy with her machine. She keeps sort of looking down. Oh, a little flick there. Back wheel just hit the grass on the edge of the road. Interesting uh, to know what is going on here with Corin Rivera and yeah. why she doesn't have a time trial bike. I'm pretty sure DSM brought their big truck and they could have thrown a time trial bike in. But maybe Scott doesn't have time trial bikes in size super mini. Yeah, because she's... she's <laughs> She's quite diminutive, I think is a nice way of putting it. She, she, she's not a big woman, uh, but she's incredibly powerful. I'd love to see her back winning races again. And uh, there's a lot of body movement with her though, there on, on the bike, she wasn't steady. And if you look at the top time trialists, when they're in that aero position on the bar extensions, they are rock steady, absolutely, completely steady. Here is uh, Alba Teruel on a Canyon time trial bike. Of course, they have time trial bikes in size very petite. Yes. Uh, they have some small riders there on uh, both the men's and women's teams, I should say. Um, and this is hugely disadvantage for Corin Rivera. Of course, she has a disc wheel, but um, yeah, of course, she's not going to beat uh, Vibus or Kirchmann. The top five, five is still Vibus leading ahead of Kirchmann, Swinkels, De Jong and Uniken. That is the top five. It hasn't changed uh, for a while and we are looking out for, well, mostly Christine Magirus. Yes. With Guderzo uh, stopping the clock in uh, 3.29.07. I wouldn't say that this is a bad time, though, from Corin Rivera. Now imagine what she could have what done. What she could have done on a, on a TT bike, yeah. But that yeah. is what ifs, and uh, they don't exactly. buy you anything. Onto the finish straight there with uh, Corin Rivera. We don't have any wind. I'm looking at a tree here. Um, hardly any movement oh, no. going on. Someone's giving her a shout. Oh my, that's a good time for a road bike. 3.22. I'm getting some, uh, some insight from my um, lovely colleague, uh, Magnus Backstedt. Um, he says it's a technical circuit where some riders prefer a road bike. And um, therefore, she has chosen a road bike. So it was a choice, uh, is what Magnus thinks. And well, if it comes to time trials, Magnus knows his stuff. Yes. I can tell you yeah. that. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he runs a bike fitting company, doesn't he? And um, he knows what aero is and, and how to get the best. Oh, we did we did a time trial uh, the other day on on GCN Plus, and I could just ask him one question, and he would talk for half an, <laughs> half an hour. So it was uh, quite an easy day for me out. Christy Majerus, the the local hero, wearing her national champions skin suit. She's done every edition of the Elsie Jacobs races since 2008, having won it in 2017. 
she also has been uh, second in 2018 just coming up a few few seconds short of winning that yes. it was a heartbreaking moment yeah. for her because of course she really wants to win her home race and she's looking um, very aero here uh, fantastic athletic rider of course so so uh, good in basically every discipline yeah. so there is a new rider on the block here in Luxembourg and unfortunately she's not starting and that's Claire Faber a very young rider who unfortunately got hit by a car two days ago she has uh, several broken ribs she has a broken jaw a broken collarbone and she had a 10-hour surgery today here in a Luxembourg hospital um, devastating blow for her of course crashing just ahead of her home race but even more uh, facing a very yeah. long um, rehabilitation so period fought certainly with Claire Farber she was uh, I think she was off the front in um, Liège best only in Liège the other day wasn't she which is a race just up the road really it's not that far away what 100k maybe this is the moment where you can benefit from their aero position and uh, like uh, Magnus Beckstedt says that they just aren't a lot of places where you can actually uh, benefit from that position. But she will make the most of it on the uh, time trial bike here. Been unwell though, she said, uh, after she finished the, the classics. The, the she had a period, she was due a period of rest, that, but then was unwell. Um, so she's just coming back on. So let's just just see how she goes today. Alba Teruel crossed the finish line in 3.28, which is a professional 35th place for the Spanish rider of Team Movistar. Last rider on the course is Maria Giulia Convalonieri, and here is Eleanor Beckstedt. And that is uh, a good time for her. Of course, she's not going to win this race, but this is very important experience for her as well also in that 330 just like uh, well almost the entire peloton yeah. today yeah. 331 for Eleanor Beckstedt meaning that we have two riders left this rider Christine Majerus one more corner for her to go there at the brown house to the right and then uh, Convalonieri personally I'm not sure if Majerus can actually beat Lorena Vives that time mm. is super fast. Wow, so did you see the way she kicked that back wheel out then to the, for the turn? Confalonieri's done very well here in the past. I mean, she's not won it, but she's, she's done very well. She's a consistent performer in this race. Perhaps not as consistent as uh, Majerus in the last few years. Here she is. No, she's Ooh. not going to win this race, but she's going to be there in the top 10, 319 for Christine Majerus. And that means that we have one rider left to cross the finish line and that is Convalonieri. Christine Majerus has a provisional eighth place so she's going to be in the top ten. She'll be pleased with that. It is a good starting point to go hunt for those uh, bonus seconds both on the course and at the finish line which is uh, very interesting because uh, Majerus will absolutely go for that one. Do, so do expect some, uh, some excellent racing uh, this weekend here. Or will they go for Unikan, who's uh, above her in GC, I believe, isn't she? Uh, just a few seconds at yeah. the moment, yes. They've both had wins. I think they've had eight of their riders w win this season. Here we go. Conf yeah. Confalonieri into the, into the final straight. Time corrected for Majerus to 3.18. And this is the last ride across the finish line. Her time is going to be 3.25, meaning that Lorena Vives wins the prologue here in Festival Elsie Jacobs, her second win of the season. Lorena Vives wins the prologue of the Siratisit Festival Elsie Jacobs with a time of 3 minutes and 12 seconds. Lea Kirchmann, three seconds slower in second place, and also three seconds slower. Caroline Swinkles in third place. Talita de Jong in fourth. Lonneke Uniken in uh, fifth, and Anushka Koster in sixth place. And if we have a top ten, we will of course give you that. But we're also working with uh, out any life timing, like everybody at home. Five seconds slower, or six seconds slower than Lorena Vibes is going to be quite the challenge for uh, Christine Majerus because, of course, Vibes is the stronger sprinter. 
And uh, this is looking very promising for Vibus. Don't miss tomorrow, and with the start of the Tour de Romandie uh, being a few hours earlier than anticipated, it means that you can also watch this race uh, live. Uh, we are going to be back tomorrow at 3.30 Central European time on the channel you are watching now. So don't miss that with this rider in the yellow jersey, Lorena Vibus. It will be very difficult for anyone to beat her as long as the team and there's no reason why they wouldn't work well together and keep focused. Vivas is looking very strong for this. I can't see her not finishing. Uh, I can't see her finishing outside the top three in any of the sprints. But then, of course, you never know, do you? We have the top ten of the race with Vivas winning ahead of Kirchman Swinkels, Talita de Jong, Lonneke Uniken, Anushka Koster, Ruth Winder in seventh place. Uh, Christine Majurus in 8th, Rianne Marcus in 9th and Emma Norsgaard in 10th place. Then going on with 11th place, Clara Coponi, 12th, Marie Lene, two riders from the FDG Nouvelle Aquitaine Futuroscope, 13th place for Barbara Guarici, 14th for Labus, 15th for Amber van der Hulst, another promising young Dutch rider, Elise Chabé in 16th, Corin Rivera in 17th place. 19th and in 20th place it's uh, Elisa Balsamo you could actually see how she was attacking that finish line Lorena Vivas a full on sprint Absolutely. essentially right at the end yep leave it all on the road as they say which she certainly did and um, looking good for the remaining two stages Tomorrow, of course, we have, as we said earlier, the longest stage in the history of this race, 125.1 kilometers, starting and finishing in Steinfort, which is uh, a small village, a small town, perhaps, to the west of Luxembourg City, right on the Belgian border. Are we actually going to hug the border, but not cross the border? Yes, we don't cross it, yeah. Because then you would have uh, all sorts of issues <laughs> in these uh, COVID yeah. times. We've got an opening, tomorrow we have an opening loop of 44.7 kilometers, which is different from the previous, the, the loop of uh, previous years. And then after that, we've got four laps of 20.1 kilometers. Similar, but not the same to the 2019 edition when we had uh, a breakaway, took the wind, didn't we? In that horrendous weather, it was Mark cold Allah. and yeah. wet and, and horrible, incredibly miserable. But we shouldn't complain too much because we, no. we are dry. We're we, not, we're not yeah. out on the road. We're just waiting for the podium. Uh, hopefully that will happen between now and a few minutes. And otherwise, uh, we will see you back tomorrow, 3.30 p.m. Central European time. So the winner of today is Lorena Wiebes from the team DSM, start number 56, with the time 3 minutes and 12 seconds, the second place. Second uh, win of the year for Lorena Wiebes, of course she won the Scheidel Scheldeprijs. Um, after a uh, well, pretty mighty sprint beating uh, Emma Norsgaard to uh, another second place. 
You do hope that Emma Norskart wins the stage here after oh. all the second place yeah. she had this season already. She's such an upbeat person to, yeah, to speak to. She's a, a, an interesting person to speak to. And I. I had a duo interview with her and her brother. That yes. was absolutely hilarious. Yes. <laughs> I always think it's sad when you uh, emerge from a press room or a commentary box and the race is all gone and it's just a street. Um, an hour, <laughs> hour before, it was an international sporting theatre and, and now it's just a road somewhere. I always, I, I always think it's very, very sad because I'm an old sentimental. I will not comment on that. Lorena Vives, uh, the winner of today's uh, prologue, 22 years of age. She just turned uh, 22. Um, comes from a town called uh, Meidrecht, which is uh, pretty close to Amsterdam. I often see her on my own training rides, um, in a flash, naturally. Um, this is her second win of the season after winning the bunch sprint in Scheldeprijs. And of course, with a three second margin on her teammate, Lea Kirchmann, it's uh, going to be incredibly, incredibly difficult for the competition to beat this woman to win the overall on Sunday. But this race is always unpredictable. The weather is looking good for this weekend. It's not going to be super warm, but uh, for now, it looks like. But, um, well, good luck, everybody else, from taking Lorena Vives off the, uh, out of the yellow jersey. And when she won the race, what was the first thing she said? Do you remember when she won Scale the Price? No, finally. At last. Yeah, finally. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, the podium ceremony is taking just a little bit too long, which means that Owen and I are just going to... Uh, Head off to the pizzeria and have something to eat. We'll be back at 3.30 p.m. Central European time tomorrow afternoon for the second stage. So just uh, don't miss that. First you can watch Romandi and then you can watch this race all on the channel you are watching right now. So thanks for watching tonight from Luxembourg and uh, see you tomorrow.